Welcome to RDWorks Learning Lab. Uh, I think I'm going dotty, part two. Now in the past, I have noted that when you import a bitmap into RDWorks, if it's a lovely black and white binary vivid picture, somehow RDWorks adds some levels of gray to it. We get a light gray and a mid gray. So it looks as though we have four levels of grey in our picture. I don't know why and I don't know what effect it has on the actual dotting itself. And that today is what we're going to try and investigate. It was a high resolution photograph which I've reduced to 100 pixels per inch. And then I've taken the colour away, turned it into grayscale and then we've turned it into a bitmap with dithering. So if I go looking closely at this picture, it's black and white. Okay, well here's our picture imported into RD Works. Now let's just zoom in and see what we've got now. Hmm, just as expected. That's as I've seen it before. Let's just have another experiment while we're here. So I just want to look at that white shape in his eye here. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I want to reduce the size of this picture to something sensible that I can actually engrave. And that may well be only 100 millimeters wide. Okay, so that's a sensible size picture to engrave. Now let's go and have a look at what's happened to the number of pixels in his eye. Well the answer is it's the same number of pixels which is rather puzzling seeing as I've taken the picture down by probably at least 50%. Let's take a look at the bitmap handle and see what sort of resolution it thinks this picture is now. See it's pushed the picture resolution up to 350 pixels per inch. So it has resampled the picture size for me. So that means that if I don't want RD Works to mess with this I've got to import this picture at the size that I want it to print. Now the next question that I want to ask I think is too complex to be answered by this picture and that's if I set the output resolution from 350 back to 100. What does it do? It says apply to view. Let's have a look at the view to start with. Let's look at the eyepiece. And let's apply to view and see what happens to the eyepiece. Hmm, as I said, it's far too complex to try and work out what's going on. So let's try and make things a lot simpler for ourselves by doing some very simple patterns. Now you recognize the pattern at the bottom left there as the pattern that we've been using up to now to do our dot sizing experiments. Now all these patterns on this page are 100 pixels per inch. I've got different densities and different patterns because what I want to now find out is how RD Works treats these pure patterns that I've generated. The black image at the top is no surprise at all because that was black to start with. This second image was 50% black and 50% white and those areas where it was 50% and 50% white have gone mid-grey. Now this one is a little bit of a puzzle because at the bottom here we've actually got 25% black and 75% white. That's the ratio in that picture. So why didn't that come out very pale grey? As per this picture over here where we look at this pattern of five I can't work out why it's gone pale grey. And yet when we get two black pixels in adjacent squares here, it's gone dark grey. Now, I'm not overly interested in the algorithm. What I'm more interested in is what these colours are doing to the dots. Does this mean to say that we've got grayscale dots? Different power dots? That's something we shall have to experiment and find out. But what I am really interested in is this black section here. I wonder what happens here. Does it go to full power and hold it all the way across as a line? Do we have power on and off? 
at 100 dots per inch. Now it's going to be quite difficult to see that on paper. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run these tests on acrylic, different speeds, to see whether or not we can pick up an answer to that question. Right, we're just going to see this pattern run so that we have a record of the directions that everything is moving in. I'll turn the air assist off. The first one was 10 millimetres a second, 10% power, and this second test is going to be at 300 millimetres a second and 30% power. So what we'll do now is the same thing on the China Blue machine. Now because the light blade and this China Blue machine have got their datums in the opposite rear corners, um, this picture is going to be reversed from that that we've seen on the light blade machine. Now also I want you to note how much over travel there is. A huge amount of over travel. Well here we have the light blade machine doing solid black 10 millimeters a second 10 percent power. Now it may be look like a straight line from the surface but you can clearly see from the back that it is a series of dots. These dots here are not significantly taller than the ones that are in the background, which are basically half grey. In other words, they were showing up as being half the power. Now the China Blue Machine is not necessarily such a clean set of dots, uh, even though it's got what, what, what I would have previously described as a crisper lens. But if you take a look down the side here, where you can see the first dots the first or last dots forming and compare them to the first or last dots in this second background set which is the checker pattern you can see that there isn't very much difference so I don't think that the grayscale showing in RD works has actually got any significance at all apart from the fact that it hides the pattern okay now this is the light blade machine running at 30 percent power 300 millimeters a second and because we're going a lot faster, you can see more of this uh, staggered effect at the end of each line. If I was to ask you to guess which direction this was cut from, I suspect you would probably say, like me, ah, I can see the power building up from the top right hand corner. It runs across the top and stops and then the second line builds up its power and goes back towards the right. You'd be totally wrong. This is cutting from the top left corner. The power starts off almost immediately within a pixel. You've got full power. And then something strange happens as the power drops off towards the end of the line. Now it overshoots quite a lot and then it starts again almost with full power runs right the way across and fades off at the other end of the other line. Now the question is these ends do not line up is it because the start of each line is delayed or because the end of each line is delayed? Now this strange power drop off at the end of each line almost almost looks like an anticipation of the beam off signal. It must be something in the controller because it's the same on both machines. If it was anything mechanical it would very very unlikely be the same for both machines. But this delay on or delay off seems slightly worse on this China Blue machine because we've got much more staggered results. So let me just explain what this picture is. The first column here is the light blade machine with 10% power and 10 millimeters a second. The second column is the China Blue machine doing exactly the same thing, 10% power, 10 millimeters a second. The third column is the light blade machine 
doing 300 millimeters a second, 30% power. And the fourth column is the China Blue machine doing the same thing, 300 millimeters a second, 30% power. So we've got results beside each other that you can compare. And the top row are all an interpretation of solid black. The second row are all an interpretation of the checkerboard pattern, basically 50% grey. This third row is a, is a representation of 25% grey, i.e. one dot in four. So there should be spaces between the dots and between the lines. Now the best example that we've got that allows us to say we can ignore any shades of grey that happen to be in the RD Works picture is this bottom row, second one in. If we take a look at the dots that are interspaced between the pattern, they're the odd dots that came up with light grey and dark grey. They don't look any different than the dots around them. So I don't think there's any power variation according to grayscale that's actually occurring. It's just an aberration that happens to occur in the RD Work software. So lots of questions answered and one or two questions still to be answered. OK, so we're back in RD Works and what I've done, I have added this border around the outside of my pattern. Because you can see the outside of my, all my patterns are lined up nicely down the left hand edge. And what this will do, this will enable me to decide whether or not at 300 millimeters a second, whether we've got a delayed start or a trailing finish. Because this gap around the outside of my border is one pixel wide, roughly 0.254 of a millimeter. And that will give me some sort of measure as to what's going on. I can't do it from the pattern itself because I don't know whether the pattern is moving in or out. I need some sort of reference outside the pattern to be able to tell me what's moving. And what we should do, we should turn that into a cut layer. So this time I've put things on a white background just to make things a little bit easier to see. Um, this is the light blade, 10 millimeters a second, 10% power. Now you can see all the uh, all the dots on there, but the thing that I want you to look at is down at the right hand end, where all the ends are nicely lined up. Now down at the left hand end, we've got a slightly messy end there where they tail off every other line. Um, but if we take a look at the gap between the top line and our reference line, you'll see that it's probably about half the thickness of the reference line. When we change the power to 30% and push the speed up to uh, 300 millimeters a second, the tail end of the second line hasn't really changed its position relative to the reference line. It's stuck on the reference line. Whereas the top line, the gap has increased very slightly, giving the impression that we've actually got more of a delayed start than a delayed finish. Now we jump over to the China Blue machine and this is 300 millimeters a second, 30% power. Significant difference in look. First of all, the lines are a lot thinner and the gaps are bigger. Um, but we've also got a hideous amount of offset on the ends between the lines. Now you can see that the end of the first line, the tail of the first line, is sitting on the center of our reference line. So that's what I want you to remember. So now what I'm going to measure is from the center of the reference line to the end of the top line. And the top line is around about 4.85, something like that. Now I'm going to move to this second line down and I'm measuring the second line down and that's about 4.9. Now that's quite an interesting number to remember that 4.9 because what I'm now going to do is I'm going to go into the machine and I'm going to change the backlash setting. I'm going to add 0.2 of a millimeter backlash and here's the effect that it has. Look at the right hand end, it's quite miraculous, it's nearly fixed the offset. Let's just have a check see what the dimensional changes have been. From the center of our reference line to the end of the top line has now come 5.1 and our second line down is still 4.9. Okay, 
we've nearly fixed the backlash because the top line is still slightly in from the second line down. So let's put point 0.4 backlash compensation in. The tail is still stuck. The tail of the top line is still stuck on the center of our reference line, but it's now hanging over the end of the second line. So we've overcooked the backlash compensation. But just for interest, let's do some measurements. From the center of our reference line to the end of the top line, uh, we now 5.4. And our second line down, still 4.9. So let's change it to 0.3 millimeters backlash compensation. And hey, look at the right end ends of those lines. They're more or less spot on. Quick check on the dimension of our top line tells us we're now at 5.2 millimeters. And a check on the second line down, still 4.9. So when we look at the way the backlash compensation has been used, what's it done? Well, the top line is a left going line and therefore what it's doing it's advancing the start of the laser beam but it's only advancing the start of the laser beam going left it's not advancing the start of the laser beam going right so I'm trying to work out what value that would be to us perhaps you've got an answer well, I'm afraid my head is beginning to hurt again. Um, we're probably two thirds of the way through that list and I think we shall have to leave the remaining bit till next time, a part three. So until then, thanks for your attention.